friends, welcome back to my channel. About to get edgy, about to get raw. I'm about to probably lose some friends. Get ready. But before the video starts, please hit the notification bell and subscribe to me so you can see this face once a week, at least once a week. Sometimes a, you know, a surprise video pops up every now and then, but you never know. Without further ado, here we go. Flappers, tap dancing, Asian stereotypes. These are just some of the things that you'll find in Thoroughly Modern Millie, a musical about a small town girl with big dreams. The musical is based off of a movie which was made in the 60s, but the musical was introduced in 2002. It's been around for a bit, but recently an article came up on my Twitter newsfeed that kind of geeked my uh, eye holes. If that makes sense. A group of Asian American protesters criticized a high school production of Thoroughly Modern Millie over the weekend in Long Island because they say the show is racist. They held signs outside the school saying, racism is not entertainment and say no to racist musical. And I get where they're coming from. The show does feature two Asian immigrants who move to New York and then start out their lives in the United States in the lowest level position you could take in the workforce ever working for a woman, trying to disguise herself as an Asian woman, to then trick young women into going into slavery in Asia. Yeah, it's a lot. However, I'm here to give my opinion on the whole thing because one, I'm Asian, as you can tell. And two, I've actually directed a production of Thoroughly Modern Millie. In 2013, I directed a kids production of Millie. I've made a couple videos before about how I'm probably an awful Asian role model, and this will probably be added to the highlight reel, and here's why. I don't agree with these protesters. Okay, and then to backtrack a little bit, I read the Broadway World article about this whole thing, and then I got to this one line that said, the musical features a Caucasian character who pretends to be of Asian descent to pull off an evil scheme. And I made the same face that I made when I took calculus in college. It looked like this. Wait, what? Like the first thing I thought of was like, maybe Millie dons like an Asian looking disguise. And then I was like, oh, that's metal. So then I was sitting there thinking for way too long about what this person was referencing. I was about to give up. And then I jumped on Wikipedia. I spent a whole summer doing this show, like, days long, not just like evening rehearsals, but like days long rehearsals with a bunch of kids for a whole summer. I spent months on this show reading and rereading the script to put this together. And I still had to jump on Wikipedia to jog my memory. So what I'm saying is I probably have amnesia and if I'm right, I'm not surprised. Anywho, for those of you who are not familiar with the musical, there's a subplot where Mrs. Mears, an angry Caucasian woman, dresses up as an Asian woman in disguise to try to trick and kidnap young women and then sell them into slavery in Asia. That's the part that the line in the article was referencing. So then I read that part of the Wikipedia plot synopsis section and then I was like, oh. Now before I go any further, I'm just gonna preface this by saying I'm just gonna talk about the Asian stereotype controversy related to this show. The whole, you know, white slavery part, that could be its whole other video because Mm. I remember reading the script for the first time and then being like, okay, so this kid's show has a woman who knocks out another woman with chloroform and sends her to Asia. We're gonna have her played by an 11 year old. Great. So now I'm gonna do my best impression of a mediocre white man who goes, well, <laughs> actually. And chat for a bit about why these protesters here are, for lack of a better word, misguided? Misguided, we'll say that. Or if I was a Southern Belle from Steel Magnolias, I would say, bless their hearts. This is why Thoroughly Modern Millie is not racist, possibly, if it's done well. First of all, it's dangerously easy for Ching Ho and Bun Fu to be played as your typical Asian stereotypes, but the authors of the show strongly advise against it. That wasn't that wasn't their intention at all. Dick Scanlon, who wrote the lyrics for the show, penned a letter uh, to kind of address any concerns that probably any producers or directors or parents would have when, uh, if you know, whether school was trying to figure out if they wanted to do this show or not. I'll link it below in case you're interested in reading the whole thing. But basically, this is what Scanlan had to say about Ching Ho and Bun Fu. I think the script states clearly, and if it doesn't, I'm stating it clearly here, that in no way are their performances to be exaggerated 
to lampoon, made fun of, nada. The actors should approach their roles no differently than the actress playing Millie approaches hers, with truth, integrity, imagination, and intentionality. Wait, quick, I want to point out that one part of the quote where he says, and if it doesn't, I'm stating it clearly here. That's like the theater person equivalent of like, per my last email, <laughs> or like, as I said earlier. <laughs> and you can tell this dude is annoyed. <laughs> if there's a production of Millie where these two characters are played as Asian stereotypes, the authors are not at fault, it's the director's fault. It's also crucial to cast actors of Asian descent, which I feel like goes without saying, but there are some people who I think need things to be spelled out for them. I think they need jars opened for them. I think they need us, uh, you know, those like traffic control people on like the at the airport. Like they need those people on the side of the road at all times. And not to brag, but when I directed Millie, we had not one, not two, but three Asian kids in the cast. We had a Ching Ho, we had a Bun Fu, and we had somebody to play their mom at the very end of the show. And they were all fantastic. I mean, it's not lost on me how lucky we were to get everybody that we did for that show. Now, there are some people out there who probably living in like, Iowa, and that sucks. But that doesn't mean you can justify your casting choices for Ching Ho and Bun Fu to be played by sophomores Tommy and Kevin, who probably look more like Zach and Cody. If your school or community theater is overwhelmingly vanilla, oh darn, well oh, that's too bad. Well I guess that just narrows down your choices to like, oh gosh, I don't know, Beauty and the Beast, Shrek, Legally Blonde, The Addams Family, Into the Woods, Little Shop of Horrors. God, what a small selection of shows. Oh man, what are you gonna do? Another thing I wanted to point out, and also as someone who's done the show, is that Ching Ho and Bun Fu speak in Cantonese, but they sing in Mandarin, but they speak in like legit both of those languages. In the Broadway production, and in the production that <laughs> I directed, there were accurate subtitles somewhere on the stage where the audience could easily see it. Good, I hope you die. Every production of Millie also receives an audio guide to kind of guide the actors into like how uh, they should pronounce Ching Ho and Bun Fu's lines. And then going back to Scanlon's letter, he says, the audio guide is conducted by an actor born and raised in China until he was 15. And I will also say that no, there were no Cantonese or Mandarin characters written in the script. Everything was written phonetically, which I'm sure is where an actor can fall into the trap. Cause then there's that temptation to then talk with, you know, R's instead of L's and L's instead of R's. Like, the, like that typical accent that you see all the time in movies. But then again, I also had the script for the kids version and not the adult version, so I can't really, you know, confirm whether that's the same for both the kids and the adults version. And if that makes you mad, imagine being a nine-year-old who's being asked to learn another language while they're still trying to learn how to order spaghetti at Olive Garden. I've also heard the critique that making the characters speak in this foreign language instead of English is also making the show racist. Um, no. <laughs> These guys have only been in the U.S. for a few weeks, so no, like, there's a good chance that their English is probably not gonna be at 100%. That's like throwing me into Dance Moms and then Abby Lee getting mad at me because I don't know what a pure red is. Now let's move on to Mrs. Mears. Mrs. Mears, as we said, is an angry, bitter white woman who has seen better days, and in order to pull off this scheme of basically slavery, she disguises herself as an Asian woman to trick young, naive women. So yes, yeah, she dresses in a Chinese Chinese attire to pull off this horrible scheme, this horrible idea, but she doesn't get away with it in the end. She gets away with it for like a little bit, for like most of the show, but the ending is her getting pulled away by police. Since this musical is your typical good guys always win in the end, then Mrs. Mears most likely was probably getting hauled off to the slamma for like a real long time. So now this is where I get a little bit mean. To the protesters of this show, Y'all have not seen this entire musical and it shows. I don't call anyone stupid to their face, but this time it's a very special occasion. Y'all could have spent a few hours watching a full high school production of this ish on YouTube and that would have saved you so much time. Printing out signs, organizing protests, standing outside for two hours, probably losing your voices because of all the chanting. Also, quickly, I wanna look at that picture one more time. I just noticed those like, those two kids off to the side. Neither of them wanna be there. They both definitely had plans before this that did not involve yelling at strangers. They were both definitely supposed to go to like a friend's house or a piano lesson. 
again. And then the mom was like, absolutely not. So my final thoughts. Is Thoroughly Modern Millie racist? It could be, depending on your director, but it's also very possible to have it done very respectfully you know, if you have a smart director. <laughs> Does Thoroughly Modern Millie make light of white slavery? Yeah! Yeah, we could, we could safely assume that, again, that's another topic for a whole other video. And finally, should you do your research before blasting a show? Yes, of course you should. I don't know why I had to tell these adults this, but I have to. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you made it this long, this video's probably gonna be kind of long-ish, so thank you for hanging in there. You can like this video and share with your friends and comment what you liked about it. And uh, what else? Again, you can hit the notification bell and subscribe to me if you want to see new videos from me every week. Remember, I make a brand new video every Wednesday. You can find me on my social media down below and I will see you all next time. Bye!